For today's vocabulary notes, you will need in class 74, which is part of standard 17. This is part three, angles with vertices inside circles. So far, we've learned about three different types of angles through our first two vocabulary notes videos. And the first kind is actually showing up in this original example here. This is an example of a type of angle that has a vertex inside the circle, but it's at a very specific location. Point A, since the circle is named circle A, is the center of the circle. So think back to what we called angles that are formed by two radii, segment CA and segment BA are radii, that intersect at the center of the circle. If you're guess or you're remembering central angles, you are correct. So then if we think back to finding the measure or the relationship between the central angle and its intercepted arc, if the measure of angle CAB is equal to 55 degrees, if we follow those radii out to where they intercept the circle, then our intercepted arc would be arc BC. If that central angle is 55 degrees, do you remember what that arc measure would be? If you thought 55 degrees, then you are also correct. So central angles and their intercepted arcs have exactly the same measure. What we're going to look at today is a second type of angle that has a vertex inside the circle. It's not going to be at a particular location like the center. So in this example, the center of the circle is point F. But these two chord-chord angles intersect inside the circle at point E, but point E is just a random interior point. And when those two chords, those segments that have both endpoints on the circle intersect, they actually create this pair of angles that are marked with those congruent marks and a second pair of angles. So there are four angles that are considered chord-chord angles sitting right here. They come in pairs because these are our vertical angles back from first semester. And so if we're defining a chord-chord angle, it's gonna be any angle that's formed by two chords intersecting at a vertex inside the circle. The measurement of these chord-chord angles is a little bit more complicated than the measurement of central angles. Since these two angles are vertical, we know they have to be congruent. But if we travel out to the intercepted angle for, or the intercepted arc for this angle on the left, it's AB. And if we travel out to the intercepted arc for this angle on the right, it's arc CD. Now there's no guarantee that these arcs are exactly the same measure, but we know that these angles have to be the same measure since they're vertical. And so what we end up having to do is average these two arcs. Well, averaging is something you might have done recently, but if you were averaging your grade, you would add up your grades and divide by the number there are. So we're gonna add up these two intercepted arcs, and then we're gonna divide by two, or take half of that sum. So it's not going to be possible to find the measure of this angle or that angle based on just one intercepted arc. It's going to be based on two. So we're gonna look at the two arcs that are intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. So if we're looking specifically for the measure of angle CED, that's this one over here on the right side, we would take its intercepted arc so that would be the measure of arc CD. We would take the measure of its vertical angle, intercepted arc, the measure of arc AB. We would add those up and divide by two to average them out. If we were looking instead for the measure of angle AEC, that's this top angle that I put a star in earlier. So we would travel out to its intercepted arc then we would travel out to its vertical angles intercepted arc, and those are the two arcs. We would take the measure of arc AC, we would add that to the measure of this arc, which looks like it might almost be a major arc, but I think it's just a tad less than a semicircle, so I'm gonna stick with two letters to name it. 
those would get added together and then divided by 2 to average out and tell us how big those chord chord angles are. All right, that's it for today's vocabulary notes. You'll come back tomorrow and we'll do examples in class to see how those ideas work to help us solve for both arcs that are missing but also angles that are missing.